Next on KPBS Evening Edition, working together to help working families. Several local mayors pull a power play when it comes to affordable housing. How they want you to buy in. Plus, no water, no business, no problem. How a local community is hoping you will help them in a time of need. And a major announcement from San Diego State University regarding the Mission Valley Stadium. We are live with the latest on the development. KPBS Evening Edition starts now. Good evening. It's Thursday, December 5th. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Trabolsi. It's an issue most of us face, the rising cost of housing. And today, a handful of mayors in the North County came together to support a ballot measure they claim will help bring about more affordable housing. KPBS's Priya Shreether explains. It's a 2100 home development in an area near San Marcos and Escondido proposed by San Diego based developer Newland Sierra. The San Diego County Board of Supervisors approved the project in 2018, but opponents gathered more than 100,000 signatures to force it onto the March 2020 ballot. We have a motto in Twin Oaks Valley. It's called Keep Twin Oaks Valley Rural. Opponents say the development would cause more traffic in the area and ruin the natural environment. But the mayor's of Oceanside, Vista, San Marcos, Carlsbad, and Escondido signed a letter today giving their support to the project. I think it is a good compromise. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, we need workforce housing. I mean, we need low-income housing. We need a lot of housing, okay, in every category. Most of the homes will cost between $500,000 and $900,000, but Newland Sierra has promised to allocate 10% of the homes to affordable housing. It really fits into all of the different income categories, so it's a broad spectrum of housing. It's for our workforce, it's for uh, low-income folks, and then also the move-up buyers within the communities. If approved, the project would be complete in seven years. Priya Shreether, KPBS News. It's been a struggle. Nearly 200 businesses in Poway have been closed due to that water contamination story we've been following all week. Some are beginning to open their doors for business. Others are still shut down. More now from KPBS's Matt Hoffman. Well, I get calls constantly all day long, people showing up, oh, you're open. No. Ron Pohl owns Papa Duke's Deli and Grill in Poway. Papa Duke's Deli and Grill, Ron. No, we're like everybody else, we're closed. He's been turning away customers since Saturday. It's agonizing because not only do you lose money, you throw away product because of spoilage. There are still bills due. And he's not alone. All of the restaurants in Poway were closed by the health department last weekend after runoff from recent storms contaminated the city's water supply. They have to have some kind of common sense and get everybody back going. I mean, a whole town can't be without water and all the businesses go without. Poles had to throw away some product. Oh, we throw away lettuce, we throw away the organic spring mix, which has a short shelf life, uh, tomatoes, uh, mushrooms, mostly produce stuff, but a lot of deli meats and cheeses. Not only is his business hurting, but his employees are too. I'm losing my revenue and the employees are losing pay. So they're not out buying anything because they have no money. And it is coming on Christmas. Paul could have applied for a temporary permit from the county, but that comes with some limitations. That would have actually cost me more money. They wanted $469 just for the permit. So far, 46 businesses have applied for the modified permit and 21 have been approved in Poway. Uh, we're closed like everybody else in the town. Poll is hoping the boil water advisory will be lifted by tomorrow. That's the earliest officials say it could happen. What I've lost in revenue and then what I've thrown away, yeah, we're getting up near $8,000. And it's going to be worth because bills like the electric bill is going to come due at the end of the month, and there's no money coming in to pay for that bill. Poll is talking to other small business owners to try and recover losses. Any other restaurant owners, you know, let's get together. Let's see if we can get some compensation for this because we should in all real because we didn't do anything to cause this. In the meantime, he just wants to stop turning away customers. And here we go. Papa Duke's telling and goes, Ron. Not at all. We're closed like everybody else. I'm sorry. And he has one message for officials dealing with the water crisis. Don't pass the buck and blame the other guy. Let's be honest. Let's fix it. Straighten it out and let's give some help to everybody that could use it. Some good news, the restaurants will be able to reopen almost immediately after the restrictions are lifted, whether that be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. 
Tonight, new developments for the Mission Valley Stadium site. Moments ago, San Diego State University officials gathered to make a big announcement on the project. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen is live from SDSU with the latest. Andrew? Well, my uh, SDSU officials just held a press conference in the Alumni Center right behind me. The announcement is a fairly big one, $15 million donated to the university's stadium construction in Mission Valley, and that donation coming from a local philanthropist, Diane Basher. They're naming the field after her, Basher Field, and uh, they say that she has actually never attended the university, but she is known for her local philanthropy, and she made uh, some brief remarks tonight saying she fully supports the vision for SDSU. DSU Mission Valley, which of course includes not just a stadium, but also housing, a river park, and some commercial space, and an expansion of the campus, which the university says will allow it to stay on track and become more of a major research university. More about that stadium, of course, to remind you, 35,000 seats in that stadium. The total cost of it expected to be $250 million, so obviously the university still has quite a bit of fundraising to do on this, uh, and they're hoping that that stadium will be finished by the 2022 NCAA football season. And in order to stay on that timeline, they need to draft and uh, get approved a final purchase and sale agreement with the city of San Diego. The city attorney's office is working on that right now, um, but they have agreed on a sale price at least. Uh, this, the university will be purchasing the entire stadium property, which includes that big parking lot there, for $86.2 million. Uh, and they're hoping that the city council will give a final seal of approval to that deal in the first three months of next year. Reporting at SDSU, Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. Thank you, Andrew. Late today, two more candidates for mayor of San Diego officially filed papers to run. Barbara Bree and Scott Sherman's campaigns both made it official, saying they're in. Bree, a Democrat, currently serves on the city council in District 1. She announced her plans to run back in January. Sherman, a Republican, also serves on the city council representing District 7. He tipped his hand at running just earlier this week. We now know the trial date for the man accused of the deadly shooting at a Poway synagogue. 20-year-old John T. Ernest will hear the case against him starting June 2nd. Ernest is accused of opening fire in April, killing one person and wounding several others and setting a fire at an Escondido mosque about a month earlier. He is charged with murder, attempted murder, arson and hate crime allegations. The June trial date could shift depending on a pending death penalty decision by the San Diego County District Attorney's Office. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced today House Democrats are moving forward with articles of impeachment against President Trump. Pelosi saying the president left Democrats with no choice but to act. Phil Mattingly reports. Today, I am asking our chairman to proceed with articles of impeachment. Twelve words for history. Speaker Nancy Pelosi making clear President Trump is almost certainly on a path to be impeached by the House. It was heartbreaking, but the president gave us no choice. Sources tell CNN Democrats are considering articles including abuse of power, bribery, obstruction of Congress, and obstruction of justice. Even as some Democrats, sources say, have told leaders they remain wary of expanding the scope beyond the Ukraine investigation and into elements of special counsel Robert Mueller's report. Pelosi today refusing to get into internal deliberations. My chairman will be making recommendations as to what the articles of impeachment would. But the timeline for a final vote coming more into view as the House Judiciary Committee announced its next impeachment hearing for Monday, teeing up a possible committee consideration of articles by the end of next week and final floor votes on the articles the week of December 16th. House Republicans continuing with complete unity to oppose each step of the process. Today with the speaker announcement, she has weakened this nation. As their Senate counterparts met this week with the top White House lawyer to plan the president's defense. The actual structure of the Senate trial, though, still unknown. It's impossible to answer your question right now. Senate leaders plan to meet and try and hammer out a bipartisan roadmap forward. But there remains no guarantee one will come to fruition, leaving open the possibility that a White House push for live testimony from people like Hunter Biden and the whistleblower may be subject to a simple majority vote in a chamber where Republicans control 53 seats, something one Democratic senator told CNN would be like, quote, rolling a hand grenade into the chamber. 
The House will be in order. A kind of institutional schism that is already firmly underway in the House, as seen on live TV when in a rare show of anger, Pelosi fired back at a reporter. Do you hate the president, Madam Speaker? Because I don't, I don't hate anybody. Representative Collins, the president of the House, we don't hate anybody, not anybody in the world. So don't, don't yeah. be accusing me. I did not accuse you. You did, you did. I asked a question. Walking back to the microphone to make her point for all to hear. As a Catholic, I resent your using the word hate in a sentence that addresses me. I don't hate anyone. I was raised in a way that is full, a heart full of love and always prayed for the president. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. And if the House votes to impeach the president, the Republican-controlled Senate will have the final say. New rules could cut off more than three million people from the food stamps program. The Trump administration is unveiling three possible changes, tightening who qualifies, creating work requirements, and changing allowances for utility expenses. Nadia Romero explains what this means for struggling families. How 3 million Americans put food on the table could be at risk if the Trump administration changes how people get help from the government. The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, that's the formal name for food stamps. If families qualify, they can help with groceries and meals at school for their kids. But since his campaign in 2016, President Trump has argued against what he calls entitlement programs. And just last month at the New York City Economic Club. 7 million people off of food stamps. And we're getting Americans off of welfare and back into the workforce. The three proposed rule changes could mean 688,000 people losing assistance if a work mandate is enforced, more than 3 million losing aid if the qualifying requirements change, and nearly half a million students wouldn't qualify for reduced lunch at school. The Trump administration says the new rules would mean more Americans will get back to work. People do not want a handout. They want to work. But critics argue more restrictions on welfare programs hurt American families. They ignore already strict work requirements in statute to paint a dishonest picture of greedy, shiftless welfare sponges. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. More than 36 million Americans currently receive SNAP benefits. Some four to 7,000 more U.S. troops could be deployed to the Middle East to deter Iran. That includes ground, air, and sea-based forces. Analysts say recent Iranian actions leading up to this possible move include Iran's recent transfer of short-range missiles into Iraq. The Iranian missiles could pose a threat to U.S. forces in Iraq and could also be used to threaten Saudi Arabia. The Pentagon has yet to make any final decisions. Missteps in a second high-profile military case are putting San Diego in the national spotlight. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh says the Marines were forced to drop charges against most of the troops caught up in a human smuggling case. It started in July. Two Marines from Camp Pendleton were caught by the U.S. Border Patrol driving migrants from the border. The Marines decided to move those cases out of federal court and begin their own investigation. KPBS obtained this video recorded by Marine Public Affairs, which shows other Marines being arrested July 25th in front of their formation. Attorney Beth Peyton O'Brien was one of the attorneys who filed a motion saying those arrests were illegal under military law. Unlawful command influence is when the commander or another person subject to the code attempts to interfere in the process. By arresting those Marines in front of 800 members of their battalion, the judge... Marine Colonel Stephen Keene ruled commanders essentially biased the outcome. Keene rejected the Marines' argument that they were trying to preserve evidence by staging that formation. When you publicly humiliate the Marines while arresting them and then publicly comment about essentially their guilt, that's the unlawful command influence because you're now influencing witnesses, potential jury members. After the Marines were arrested at their formation, Marine Public Affairs made statements to the media around the country, calling the arrest shock and awe and implying leaders wanted to send a message. The judge had ordered prosecutors to come up with some sort of fix. Instead, the Marines announced Tuesday that they dropped charges against 10 Marines, allowing them instead to go right to face being discharged from the Corps, along with three others. Military justice is under a microscope after the trial of Navy SEAL Edward Gallagher. 
President Trump repeatedly meddled in the SEALs case. Prosecutors made their own missteps. The acting secretary of the Navy continues to conduct a full review of the Judge Advocate General program. Most of the attention has been on the Navy. Though, after this marine smuggling case, now marine JAG is in the spotlight. Yes, this case does not help the review of the JAG Corps right now. O'Brien is a former Navy JAG captain and Navy judge. She was already scheduled to testify in Washington as part of this review. There certainly was, in this case, the Marine case, a breakdown somewhere. And with the review, I'm certain that will be examined. The original two Marines charged in federal court will still face courts martial. Six other Marines pleaded guilty related to smuggling or a separate drug case. At least some of those pleaded guilty before the judge ruled that there had been problems with this case. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. The San Diego Unified School District is amping up its efforts against child abuse by using a mobile app. KPBS education reporter Joe Hong spoke with the district's police chief about how students can anon an anonymously report suspected predators. With a few taps on their smartphones, students, parents, and community members can now report suspected child abuse on the P3 Tips app. San Diego Unified's police chief, Michael Marquez, says he hopes this tool will lead to more trust between police and the most vulnerable victims of abuse. We want to make sure that our, both our victims and our entire family and our community know that law enforcement takes these types of things very, very seriously. And we will be very, very aggressive to make sure that we investigate each and every allegation. The app can be downloaded on most mobile devices. Anyone using the app can enter suspect descriptions, addresses, and vehicle information. You would download the app onto your phone, and then you would enter in the information that you want law enforcement to act on. And it autom you hit the submit button, and it automatically goes to our partners here in the county. Reports will be sent to the San Diego Police Department and referred to San Diego Unified Police Officers if the suspect is a district employee. Joe Hong, KPBS News. The holiday season is all about family and food, which might have you concerned about your waistline. KPBS science and technology reporter Shalina Chatlani spoke to a San Diego researcher who claims she has a science-backed strategy that could help keep the pounds off. This health and wellness strategy isn't a diet or some magic pill like the one seen on old TV commercials. What's the best way to reduce? Eat plenty or starve yourself? Starve yourself? Wrong. It's a clock, the one us humans come with naturally, says Emily Manugin, a chronobiologist at the Salk Institute in La Jolla. She specializes in human biological clocks. The biological clock system is amazing. It's this internal system that you have with your body Pretty much every cell in your body has a molecular clock, and it's going to control most functions within that each individual cell. Like when you naturally wake up in the morning or start to feel cold and shiver around the same time every night. Manugian says these clocks get cues on when to reset. Light and food are actually two of the biggest cues to tell our body the time of day. So when we're talking about light, that tends to have the biggest influence on our activity sleep cycles. Um, but food is actually going to more directly regulate your metabolism, your heart function, pretty much any organ within your kind of abdomen. <laughs> so Salk scientists decided to look at the relationship between these biological clocks and food to see whether that could have an impact on health. Manugain says people tend to eat for 15 hours a day. That means our body may be cued to work when functions like our digestive systems and metabolisms should actually be resetting so it can work properly the next day. Salk scientists decided to look at the relationship between these biological clocks and food to see whether that could have an impact on health. Manugian says people tend to eat for 15 hours a day. That means our body may be cued to work when functions like our digestive systems and metabolism should actually be resting and resetting so it can work properly the next day. So Salk scientists asked 19 people with metabolic or cardiovascular conditions to eat within a 10-hour time frame, a strategy known as time-restricted eating. Multiple groups have shown that limiting your eating window to a consistent um, eight to 12 hour window can have a wide variety of health benefits. Weight loss tends to be something that comes along with this in, in every trial. Salk scientists will be conducting a much larger trial with over 100 participants to test out this strategy further. But Manugian says it is a free and simple diet intervention people can try on their own. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. A birth control pill that you only have to take once a month? 
Well, researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed this star-shaped oral contraceptive that takes weeks to, to digest, and that way it slowly releases hormones to prevent pregnancy. So the capsule is designed to break down after three or four weeks and will exit the body through the digestive tract. Scientists say testing on pigs has been successful. The pill is one of the most popular contraception methods in the world. We are still two weeks away from the official start of winter, but as temperatures dip, many of us might get hit with a nagging cough, a runny nose, or fever. In today's Health Minute, Holly Furfer examines what you need to keep that winter cold at bay. There's really no cure per se for the common cold. Really what you would do is manage the symptoms that come with the common cold. So depending on what symptoms you have, that would determine what medications you take. First, there's pain. Acetaminophen isn't the only pain reliever out there. So there are two major products that you usually will take. The first one is either um, ibuprofen or Motrin, which is a brand name. Um, other people like to take naproxen. And when it comes to antihistamines. The main product that is in the cold medication is diphenhydramine. So one of the major side effects of these products is drowsiness. So you always want to make sure that you're not drowsy before you start driving after taking this medication. If you also have a cough, look for products with one of these two active ingredients. And what guafenicin does is when you have that deep congested cough, it helps bring out all the gunk associated with that. When you have that dry cough that you're trying to suppress, then you take dextromethorphan. And last but not least, don't forget the tissue. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. California residents can expect more intense rainstorms that could cause up to a billion dollars a year in damages. New research spearheaded by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography finds atmospheric rivers could have a major impact on the state's economy. Recent research indicates that atmospheric rivers are getting longer, wider, and wetter as the century progresses due to human-caused uh, global warming and climate change. And our research shows that even modest increases in the intensity of atmospheric rivers can have outsized impacts in terms of economic damages. And research suggests the rivers will grow in size and intensity as the climate warms. He says that raise, that raises the chance for economically damaging flooding in coming years. Elon Musk's SpaceX launched three tons of supplies, including holiday gifts and mighty mice, to the International Space Station today. The Dragon capsule was carrying holiday presents for the astronauts living on the station. It also had so-called mighty mice on board, which are rodents genetically manipulated to enhance their muscle growth. The mice will help scientists understand how to limit muscle and bone loss in humans while in space. The resupply mission is expected to link up with the space station on Sunday. Enjoy the sunshine while you can because change is on the way. More rain is headed to San Diego. Meteorologist Daji Aswa tells us what we can expect. Stormy conditions are what we were experiencing uh, for the past two days or so, but now that precipitation has moved off. And as we look back, some pretty impressive amounts here, 3.39 inches out to Birch Hill. As for Oceanside, on the lesser side, 1.20 inches. And at the San Diego International Airport, we also saw close to what we saw on Oceanside. So we were dealing with some difficult travel. That is no longer the case. Uh, here's a look at that radar and satellite from earlier today. Moisture is no longer with us, we are going to continue to see dry conditions for tonight, dropping down to 55 degrees, partly cloudy skies. And as we head across the region, also on the dry side for Mount Laguna, low of 40, cooling down to 48 and Borrego Springs, a low of 49 in Oceanside, taking you into tomorrow. Well, we are going to be looking at the likelihood for uh, some clouds to stick around. So the future cast through tonight, we are dry. Clouds will continue to increase as we head through your Friday morning and continue through the Friday afternoon and evening.
evening time, but no need for the umbrella where we are going to be looking at more wet weathers into portions of San Francisco and points to the north. We're looking at rain and even some heavy mountain snow to come further inland as we head uh, into your Saturday and Sunday as we track out another disturbance. But notice the further west and also south here. We are, are dry and not feeling too bad in terms of those temperatures. Upper 60s for San Diego and Oceanside, topping off at 69 in Borrego Springs, 52 in Mount Laguna with partly sunny skies. For your Friday through your Sunday, California will still be a hot spot for some flood risk as well as road closures along Interstate 5 and Interstate 80. So definitely want to continue to stay up to date with the forecast. As for Friday here at the coast, we are dry, topping off in the upper 60s, remaining in the upper 60s Saturday and Sunday. Perhaps some of that moisture from the storm system to our north will bring in some showers, but no widespread wet weather anticipated at this time because the system does seem to stay to our north. And by Monday, Tuesday, lots of sunshine coming back our way. Inland areas, a better chance for some steadier rain Sunday with a high of 66, drying out Monday and Tuesday with temperatures rising Tuesday. And clouds will continue to increase for the mountain areas through this weekend. Also going to be looking at clouds building out to the desert Saturday and Sunday with highs in the upper 60s. Reporting for KPBS News, I'm your meteorologist, Dodgy Aswad. Back to you. And you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.